hand planing the strips of the tip section of your rod can be quite tricky when you start. Here you see my planing form set up for the hand planing of the tip strips. The groove is quite shallow at the tip section of the planing form. With it being that shallow, when you place your strip in that groove and try to hold it in place, you can see that it is quite unstable. So planing when the tip section is this thick at the very end of the tip section can be quite difficult because of that instability. However, there's something you can do to make it easier. Here you see my planing form but at the opposite end. This is set up for planing the tip section of the rod but at the butt end of that section. At this point, as you will notice, the groove is substantially deeper than it was at the very end of the tip section. With that being the case, you can take the tip end of the strips and place them in your planing form at the butt end of the planing form. Now you see that this is much more stable and easier to plane. So I start the planing of the tip sections by placing my strip at the butt end of the planing form and I plane as such. I begin the planing of just the tip section while it is resting in my planing form towards the butt end of the form. And I will continue to do so until the tip section is reduced in size significantly enough then when I push it forward on the planing form so that the tip end of the strip is in the tip end of the planing form it is much smaller and thus much more stable in the smaller groove at the tip end of the planing form. And I will show that. Here you see my planing form it has been set up for planing the tip section of my rod. This is one of the strips for the tip section. That's the tip top of the strip and this is the butt end of the, of the tip strip. When I begin planing this, since the groove is so fine and small at the tip top end of my planing form, it doesn't offer me much stability when I place the strip in that groove. So I will start by placing the tip top end towards the butt end of the uh, planing form and begin my planing here. And I will set the strip in place in the deeper section of the planing form and take a number of passes with my plane. I will then turn the strip over to the opposing face on the opposite face and take an equal number of passes with my plane. Then I'll go back and take another half a dozen or so passes, turn it over, take another half a dozen or so passes. Then I'll move the strip forward and I'll do the same with the next section of the strip. I'll take half a dozen or so passes in this area, like so. Then I will turn it over to the opposite face and take an equal number of passes with my planning form there. Then I'll go back. I'll go back to the tip section, the tip top, and I'll take another half a dozen or so passes, turn it over, repeat that process on the opposite face, take another half a dozen or so passes, move it forward, do the same thing with the next 
section of the strip. I'll take half a dozen or so passage with my plane, turn it over, take an equal number of passages with my plane. Then I may come back all the way to the butt end of the section and start planing it also. I'll take a fixed number of passes, maybe half a dozen or so passes here. And I'll turn it over to the opposite face and do the same thing to that face, taking an equal number of passes. I may go back and forth two or three times doing, repeating that same process until my strip is thin enough that when it rests in the planing form at the tip top end of the form where the groove is very shallow, the tip section will be small enough that it will be much more stable resting in that small groove. And then I'll proceed and plane the strip as I normally do from end to end until I've got it all the way down flush with the planing form. I hope that helps.